Good afternoon, everyone. We're glad to have you today to celebrate this precious life, Deanna Cunningham, and just thinking with you as we consider heaven and what she meant to us. Uh, we are filled today with joy and also anticipation that one day we'll see her again very soon. Just want to give a special welcome to those watching us on the internet today, friends and family, and of, co of course her brother here, Clay. Our hearts are with you, sir. And we just want to take a moment and just open in prayer this face-to-face -face service. So, precious Father, thank you today that the grave is not the end. We thank you that we were made to live and that Dee Dee today is promoted and in your presence. And the one that she served and loved and talked about and ministered, she's looking at you face to face today. And I, we can only imagine just the celebration that she has is having at this moment. Lord, we just pray today that you'd bless this service, the friends and family, and minister to our hearts great comfort and joy as her life was really an example, a tremendous example to all of us. So Lord, bless this service and be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Busy to care about you. 
<clears throat> was that the Power Girls? Powers? The Power Sisters. Uh, let's see, and your brother Jay, right? And you have another brother? Four brothers and two girls. Wow, thank you. Uh, some of us are the folks from years ago who, you know, D. Cunningham was uh, was um, from the beginning back in 1976 on Cape Cod uh, and came into the ministry and um, and and she became really close in our family. Um, and we, you know, that was awesome that we would, you know, see her, know her, and be part of her life as she was for all of us in the body. And um, a few years ago when she was diagnosed with bone cancer, uh, we wondered how she was living and because she well, just was you know, eventually living across the street here. Uh, and uh, to be honest, amazed. I was amazed that she was uh, plugging along without, you know, if you knew her, like she just wasn't a complainer, but she was just like turning, uh, turning the milk into butter, you know, like just churning away. And... Um, uh, and our family, I, I, we loved it because, like, she was um, somebody that, uh, you know, became, like, our children were, were newly born when she became, like, an auntie for our kids and would uh, take them in the stroller. Uh, we lived in Finland um, in those beginning years, and she was on our team with Pastor Sivo, and, um, and we just had great, great time. And she would lead my children to the Lord, every one of them. I think every one of them she led to the Lord. And my wife and I were thinking, like, where are we in this picture? You know, why aren't we doing that? You know, <laughs> But we were happy that her kids were, and they could tell the story of how, you know, Dee led them to the Lord. And yeah, it was awesome. Uh, so in Second Corinthians 5, it says here, We know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, in the, in the Greek it really means coming apart, like pieces, you know, disconnecting our bodies, deteriorating, we know that if our body is deteriorating, we have a building of God. We have a house, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And we know that D is in that body and left this one. And as we see our bodies in time dissolve, we're happy about the whole idea of leaving it. And I think she definitely was at that place where, you know, I'm ready. And, you know, there is an amazing, amazing truth that is not heralded like it could be. And it is this book is the best for a dying person. This book is the best for a living person. This book is amazing. And I've seen over the years now, like so many, many sisters and brothers that are greatly comforted by this book. It's amazing. And she was like that. I mean, we would gather in her room and and Clay was there and such an important, important person to D, her brother, and and um, and just quote Bible verses and sing 
One time she wanted Bethany's dog to come, and the, the dog's name is Hope. And she would say, Hope, you know, I want, to, I want to touch Hope. So Bess would drive home, get the dog, you know, get in the car. And the dog, she'd bring the dog to the hospice, and the dog would be bounding, you know. And Dee would be, you know, just touching Hope. Um, and then... Uh, there was that time when she said, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited. That's amazing. For people like us, because we're born for this. We're born again for this. We are going somewhere. And, you know, when, when people are passing away, you can get their friends together and you love that and you can get a photo album and you, you, that's nice and you can get talked about the past. But who can talk about the future? You know, that's where I'm going. Who can do it? Jesus is the only one. I go to prepare a place for you. This is the... Uh, the amazing message for the unbeliever. And flying back from Europe, I was sitting next to an elderly man who was an unbeliever. And we had a nice talk. And he said, you know, I wish I was like you or, you know, somebody that had faith. And, and I, you know, we had a talk about that. And, and I said, um, you know, we're very good in our society to talk about not bumping into each other. And we're very good about keeping our boat afloat. But we're very bad at saying, what is the fleet? What's the point of the fleet? The ships, what are we doing on the sea? We're very weak in our education on talking about the meaning of our lives. But we're very good. Don't be sure not to bump into the other ship. Very good at that. And also make sure your bilge pump is clean. We're very good at that. But what the heck is going on? Why do we exist in the first place? And just to say... Um, that night when she passed, uh, we were told uh, 11 people passed that night in that facility. And not everybody goes the same way. But this uh, dear sister in the Lord, um, she just could take, if we were our family and Auntie D is there, D is there, we call her, and the milk spilled it was like, you know, no problem, we'll take care of that. We turn it into a game. If something, some bad news came, you know, that, that we can deal with that. Always it was, we can deal with that. God is here, you know, let's, you know, having a good time, uh, being lighthearted. She was like this, loving the body. And when Mika went to Hungary, you know, Dee slipped her a little bit of money. And said, you know, go on the mission field, you know, go on the mission field. You know, it was, uh, you know, she just was an awesome person. And I think today she would love it that we just are glorifying God and what he did in her life. And just say, wow, maybe it's possible for me too to live like that and to um, think this way and uh, to someday meet Christ, um, you know, with confidence in our hearts. So if there's anyone here who is not a believer, we encourage you to put all your trust in Christ. She would want you to know that and to do that and to say in your heart, yes, to Jesus, there isn't any other way. And she's a D. Cunningham, the old Bible speaker, the old greater grace believer, the old believer embracing, going to the end 
with an attitude of, okay, I am excited. I am excited. I'm leaving this body. Wow, I'm excited. I'm going to meet Jesus. Amazing. So would you pray with me, please? <clears throat> Lord, thank you for this uh, treasure of memories from a dear saint who honored you, who loved the gospel, shared it, lived for it, and went all the way in her heart with it, not fooling around, not foolishness, not a gossip, not a complainer, not living in some crazy world that we could all live in, but in a pure, godly way, embracing the truth with great appreciation. Thank you for her life and memory and the fruit that remains. And anyone here who does not have Jesus, maybe on the internet, I'll say to Jesus, I need you and I trust in you. Give me this new birth and do this in my life. Thank you, God. That's why you came to save me and give me a new life. In Jesus' name, amen.
Maybe you saw these bulletins on the way in. Um, Pastor Schaller wrote something beautiful on the back here about Dee's life. Be sure to take a look at that when you get a moment. But just looking at that beautiful face, that beautiful life, that speaks so much to us, doesn't it? And uh, right now we're going to have some selected testimonies. We've asked a few to share how Dee impacted their life. So right now maybe we can start with Ula, if that's okay. Hi, I'm Ulla, and uh, if you don't know it, I'm from Sweden, so I think I can speak for all the people in other countries that she touched. Um, the other day I was making my bed, and I was looking, and I looked, oh, Dee gave me these sheets. <laughs> and then later I was having my tea, and I, oh, Dee gave me this mug. <laughs> and I just thought of all these things she's given me, like things. But then later I thought, like... But she's given me so much more, and her life has really touched me, and I know so many of, well, all of us. And I thought of the most important thing she taught me was to love. And I just thought of her life, how she loved people. She loved her family, her brother, the Schaller family, her close friends, the body. She loved being in the body. And... This, the last day she had, like, and when she was able to come to church, she was so happy. <laughs> she just, like, relished that. And um, she loved new people in the church. It wasn't just old friends, but new people. She was an investor, and she was a dorm head for a couple years, and she loved the young girls in Bible college. And then she loved souls. She loved soul winning. And it was always a treat to go soul winning with her. And just a few weeks before she ended up in the hospice, she came soul winning with me. I had her in a wheelchair, and there we are at the Northeast Market, and she's sitting and talking to people, and she had a big smile, and she loved it. And then she loved, of course, the body, the body. And in the body, she loved the Word of God. She loved reading the Bible. She loved listening to messages. We would send text messages back and forth, like this Bible verse, and what about this Bible verse? And not long ago, we sat in the cafe, a few of us ladies, and she was just sharing with us from her heart. And one thing she said, we were talking about it yesterday, she said, stay current with the pulpit. And she, if anyone did, she listened to every message she could on the internet, on the phone. And then when I was in the Bible class, in the college, I would have her on my phone, <laughs> like three hours of Pastor Chappelle or two hours of Pastor Schaller, and every day she would listen to the nine o'clock service on Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, and ready for more and more, and we would share our notes back and forth. But most of all, she loved her Lord, her Savior, and it was so evident in her life, and that has taught me so much to see her love for Christ and what he's done in her life, in all of our lives. I love her for that. Thank you. Thank you. Pam Hedrick, come on up. Thank you, Ula. I, I wrote this out because I was so afraid that I'd be broken and couldn't say all that I wanted to and so much of what I am going to say is a lot of what Ula said but maybe just a little differently and then the other thing um, the song that we just heard was I remember Dee Dee up in Lenox singing the same song so it was um, it was very amazing to hear that today so I know her as Dee Dee I never quite could shorten it 
Um, we met in the fall of 1976 when we both came into the Bible Speaks in Lenox, Massachusetts. She was a country girl from West Virginia, and I was a country girl from Vermont. We had our love of nature in common, but the overwhelming thing in our relationship through the years was as David and Jonathan, the Lord, was always between us. Yesterday at the outreach meeting, Pastor Schaller said we loved Dee because of her character. She really lived in Christ's character. And then I have these numbered. Anyway, that's because I was a teacher. She had, she had a, a deep love relationship with Christ. She saw his hand in everything, and no matter what was happening, she always gave him the glory. If she was sick or in pain, it was because he knew best, and he always had her best interests at heart. She had a deep love for the word, as Ula said. Many times, after, especially after she got sick, she would say, when I came to visit, I didn't sleep well last night, but I had such a wonderful time in the word. Let me share some verses with you, he gave me. And when I was, I, I have lots of things also that she gave me, and one of them is the Bible I read every morning. She loved the Amplified, and it's a, it's a parallel translation. And in the front, she wrote this verse. This really is her with the Lord. Hosea 11.4, I drew them with cords of a man, <clears throat> with bands of love, and I was to them as one who lifts up and eases the yoke over their cheeks. And I bent down and gently laid food before them. Her food was definitely the word of God through the pulpit and through her own love for the Bible. She loved the body of Christ, as Ula said. She honestly loved every body member. And she was always edifying and positive about everyone. And anybody who spent time with Dee knows you, you, you couldn't even go near saying anything negative. She just, she was a warrior to be edifying to, about everybody. She loved the vision in the body for missions. It's like she, she, it was so in her heart. She went on many mission trips herself, but even when she couldn't go, she loved hearing about mission trips. And any time I went over for a short-term visit, she would, she wanted to be my special prayer warrior at home. And that meant that when I came back, I had to show all the pictures, tell her, <laughs> tell her all the details, because, I mean, it was just in her, her bones that this vision for missions. Um, outreach. Oh, this is so precious. A couple years ago, she couldn't physically go outside. So she went to Fellowship Hall on Saturdays, and um, she wanted to have a prayer meeting because she couldn't go outside. So there were a few of us who would stay and pray with her. It, this happened for several weeks. Um, and it was amazing because when people come back and they found out we'd been praying, they said, I've never had so many divine appointments. But that was because she was so one with the body's outreach vision. She, if she couldn't be there, she wanted to be praying for it. And then Ula told you about I thought that was so amazing. I think it was two or three weeks before she was in the hospital. She was down at the Northeast Market. And I, isn't one of the photos that we're going to see of her at, at the market? Um, and then this is what I want to say about what Ula was saying about how love was so important to her. Um, uh, in, in a message in Budapest, Pastor Schaller was talking about agape love. And he said, there comes a time when we really understand this is what it's all about. And Dee Dee shared with me, it wasn't that long ago, she said, when I realized that, I asked God to give me a baptism in love and, and to really give me an anointing of love. And I can, I just know he did that because every time I was with her, it was like there was a waterfall of love cascading out of her toward myself and then anybody who was being mentioned. Just this amazing, supernatural, agape love. So I, I'm going to finish the saying, spending time with her was like being with Jesus himself. 
I'm so thankful to God. He gave me such a deep, personal, eternal friend. Thank you, Pam. Uh, is Tina? Tina could be next. Thank you. You know, maybe you've seen this on Facebook. There's a whole page of many, many testimonies, and we've printed out three of those pages on the, uh, on the table out in the lobby, so there's many things we could say. I just want to pray, oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the privilege of experiencing a part of this amazing mission, missionary woman, Dee Cunningham. Um, I just have a few verses that I, I thought of when... Um, that helps me to remember Dee and, and um, experience um, the portions that she shared with me. The first is Psalm 25, 14. The secret of the sweet, satisfying companionship of the Lord have they who fear, revere, and worship him. And he will show them his covenant and reveal to them its deep inner meaning. I met Dee on outreach um, and immediately had a, a heart connection with her. I just knew there was something special about this relationship, this woman. And um, in September of 2013, I had an urge uh, after hearing that she was seeking assistance and the door just opened for me to be able to, um, to spend time with her. And um, I, it was really awkward at first because <laughs> when I went, I felt like I was forcing myself on her. And um, she was just so pleasant and so welcoming. But I spent a lot of time cleaning and doing things for her because I didn't know what to do. And I took my filthy rags and put them in the car and I did it again um, until one day she said, you know, sit, sit with me. And... It was then that I began to really um, develop this relationship um, and seeing Christ all over that, that apartment and in her heart. And um, she really, there's so much to share about her that um, I can't possibly do it. I, I'm still learning from, from experiences with her and portions that she shared with me. And Isaiah um, 32, 1 and 2. Behold, a king will reign in righteousness, and princes will rule with justice. And each one of them shall be like a hiding place from the wind and a shelter from the storm, like streams of water in a dry place, like the shade of a great rock in a weary land to those who turn to them. That's such a special, uh, amazing um, passage. She gave me the book, Streams in the Desert. And um, that came to me yesterday, and I realized that, that that's where the name of the book came from. Through everything that she did, she was my hiding place for a while. I, I, I got so excited about going to her home that um, it's very hard sometimes to drive by there and not like know that I can't go in and, and talk with her. But um, I know that she's in a much better place. And I'm ex so excited for her there. I'm so happy for her. Um, she was so giving to me of her time and of her, um, her wisdom in, in God. Um, there's another passage Philippians 3, 8. I count everything as lost compared to the possession of the priceless privilege, the overwhelming preciousness, the surpassing worth 
and supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, and of progressively becoming more and deeply and intimately acquainted with him, of perceiving and recognizing and understanding him more fully and clearly. For his sake, I have lost everything and consider it all to be mere rubbish, refuse, dregs, in order that I may win, gain, Christ, the Anointed One. That was her. She did that. And um, I only got to experiencing, really, rarely visiting her for five months. Um, I know that many of you have experienced years and years with her. But um, she pointed, everything pointed to Christ. And I love that about her. I love listening to her um, experiences in mission fields. Um, I enjoyed just, she had tapes playing, she had um, even the fireplace um, that had the passages and we would listen to Grace Hour together and it was just, um, it was really an amazing, amazing and anointed visit every time I, I saw her. Um, and the last one was uh, Philippians 4.8. For the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence, and is honorable and seemingly whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there is any vir virtue and excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on and weigh and take account of these things. Fix your minds on them. And that was, again, that was her. Um, I, I was a nurse for 27 years in, um, actively, and I've never met anybody like this uh, who fought the good fight, who endured pain and suffering with Christ and with joy. And um, she had faith through the end. And I just think of Romans 8.35, what can separate us from Christ's love. It's, uh, I'm happy for her. She has victory in Christ. And we'll all be there if we, if we believe in Jesus Christ. He is um, our Savior. And um, we need to tell people about it. Thank you. Yeah, just to make mention, uh, Tina had also mentioned it, also Lisa Schaller, of course, and Beth Odahara and the family, just countless hours, and many other body members that we could fail to remember all their names, just the countless hours of just sitting with Dee and loving Dee, serving Dee, and uh, amazing. Pastor Matt, come on up. Thank you, Tina. I don't really feel worthy to share about her because some of you have known her since I've been in diapers, you know, and uh, that's humbling. Like, I, I'm really honored to be able to think about her life with you guys. Um, Hebrews 11.38, of whom the world was not worthy. I thought about just saying that and putting the mic down and going back to my seat, but uh, some people wanted me to reiterate some of the things I posted on my Facebook about how deep touched my life. <clears throat> and um, I was thinking about uh, early on when in Bible school, like when you're kind of confused about what you're doing there and you're not really sure what's going on and, you know, Somebody says something to you that's hurtful and they don't even know what they said. And you know, you know what I'm talking about, that little inner struggle. Uh, well, not that all of you would know, but I'm sure some of you know. Uh, and D, D, she just... <laughs> she 
she knew how to speak to you and make you feel valuable. And I know some of you know that. Like Dee, I, I remember I had a run-in with a, a leader in the, the school and uh, I shared at a rap what I thought was like edifying and he just like nailed me to the wall and said like, you have nothing to share and like, you're a freshman, like don't think you know any, like, I don't, you know, maybe I needed it at the time, you know. And I was just like, I'll never open my mouth again. <laughs> That's the plan. And uh, D walked up to me, and it was when I handed out those, um, the CUD papers, where the, ver the verses and the statements from the different leaders. And uh, she said, thank you, Pastor Matt. I'm talking, I'm like 18 at the time. And... Uh, Someone said, excuse me, he's not a pastor. And D looked at them like, like, do you want to lock horns with me? Like, you know. <laughs> and uh, I'm like sitting there like, this is awkward, you know. I like have my stack of papers. I'm like, should I, should I back up, you know. And D said, like, he's been a pastor for years. And, like, I don't know. I don't know if you know what that means for a young leader and like, when someone speaks words of faith in their life. But that, like... like and when I got ordained, she, like, you know, she just winked at me, like, I know, I've known for years, you know. And uh, then uh, I had a bit of a rough breakup with the, the gal I was with and uh, had one of those Lone Ranger seasons, you know. And... Uh, And I was sitting in the, in the back of the fellowship hall listening to a message, but I wasn't really listening. I was just kind of like wandering around in my brain wondering what I was doing here, you know. And Dee caught me. <laughs> she came up all the way to the back left corner, you know. And I'm sitting there and I said, hey, Dee. And I just gave her that smile like, you're about to pull my card, aren't you? You know, like, you're so discerning. <laughs> And she said these words, and I'll like never forget them. She said, like, the reason it's taking so long for God to add someone to your life is because he's preparing his absolute best for you. And, like, <laughs> she just cut past all the stuff, and, like, she got it. She understood pain in the countenance. She understood, like, struggle and where you were. And, she, you know, she didn't have to preach to you. She just loved you. I was thinking this morning, I just remembered this, that when my mom died, I was like broke, and you know how much you spend on gas and parking and hospice and food and all relative, you know how that goes if you've lost someone, and like, I didn't even have money for like anything, and somebody said, Matt, you gotta buy shoes, because my shoes were like, you could, you know, when you can talk with your shoes, like, <laughs> they look like that move, some of you are going, what, and other Bible school students are like, yeah, check my shoes out, you know. Um, so I had that going, and Dee just like, she heard someone teasing me about it, and she was like, you know, here's some money for some shoes, like, I want you to have shoes, you know. <laughs> I was like, Dee, I can't take that, I, I know you're struggling financially, I'll, I'll go to the Salvation Army, it's cool, I'm sure I can find some six dollar shoes or something. But like, I'll give you the money for shoes, like, I'll speak faith in your life, I'll help you practically and spiritually, and like... That's D, of whom the world was not worthy, and still isn't. And like, never underestimate in the body of Christ when you love somebody, like what it can mean to someone. <laughs> the last thing I'll say is I just remember D would always say, I'm praying for you, I'm praying, and God's going to add the right girl to your life, and I said, like, you might have more faith in that department than I do, D, at this point. And she met Johanna. <laughs> and she said, you're the one we've all been praying for. <laughs> and I, I'll never forget that. And it's... I'm sorry. It's people like that that make me think I can make it. 
I'm like, that God's going to get me through. It's people like that. It's big faith in your life that make you think, you know, God is with me. And like in our pain and in our brokenness and in the things that God allows, like thank God there are these. There are people that can discern and cut past all the garbage and spiritual expectation and religion and like, you know, the pressure to perform and they like, they love you. So thankful for people like Dee. Okay, thank you, Pastor Matt. We're going to have a slideshow now. Let's look to the screens, please. say a thousand words or 
you know, just as we close, just thinking of Dee's life in a poured out vessel, wasn't she tremendously just poured out for the gospel? And just thinking of her brother here, Clay, and, and just be praying for him. And maybe afterwards, if you don't know him, to come meet him. And he is a precious brother. And, but just to think that today she's with the Lord and all of the works that we do and say and think are written in a book. And I'm sure she has volumes in the heavenly library. Amen. And I think of her time with us in the Ukraine and just how she just loved people and stumbled through the, the Ukrainian words and the names and just, she, she just hugged and loved and, you know, that universal, that universal language of love, she, she knew it well. And just as we close and pray, let's just uh, consider what she meant to us and continue in that same spirit of grace. So, Father, we are so thankful. That's the word we don't say lightly, but we are just so grateful that we knew the her tongue was seasoned with so much grace, and her life was so so poured out and sacrificed, even in the little things they they were big things to her as she was connected so much to your heart and I just pray today that you bless clay and bless each one, and may we live. Uh, loving and serving as she served and loved. Thank you, God, for this service today. Comfort our hearts. Comfort those that mourn. Thank you today that, that our hope is in that promise that one day soon uh, we'll be face to face with you rejoicing around the Lamb of God in that great heavenly feast. Lord, thank you today for this precious life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.